Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fully Charged Show. Really excited this week. Now, you know that on this show we cover things like electric cars, electric buses, uh, uh, tractors, bikes, scooters, all that sort of thing. But what I'm seeing here I think is vitally important for the future transition away from burning diesel and towards using electricity for moving stuff around. That is a 16 tonne delivery truck. That is for, they say last mile, it's last 20, 30 miles in cities when you want to deliver loads of stuff to a supermarket, big bags of carrots, loads of bread, all that stuff. The stuff that we rely on every day, it's got to be taken to that store. That is a brilliant way of doing it. This is an incredible, vitally important step. So that is the Volta Zero electric truck. And this is fully charged. So Duncan, it's amazing to see. I walk around the corner, see this truck. You know, I've seen pictures of it, but it's not till you see it in the real, in the in the flesh, as it were, that it, you go, that is really special. I love the look of it. It's really good. I mean, it's, and this is a perfect environment for it. We're actually in a city street. There's loads of clanging going on up there. So this is where it, this is going to be its home in future. It's not going to be going between on auto routes between cities. It's urban deliveries. Abs absolutely. You know, Volta Zero is the world's first purpose-built full electric truck specifically designed for inner city and last mile logistics. So yeah, this is, this is its natural habitat. It's designed to be safe, to operate safely in amongst the tight city streets that it needs to operate in. It's designed to be sustainable, taking zero emissions, but also looking at sustainability in the round, looking at natural composites and looking at a holistic approach to reducing the environmental approach to, to everything that we do. But yeah, it's, it's so exciting to see it in its natural surroundings and it won't be long before we actually see them operating on roads. Uh, so the things I would assume that, that I know that a lot of our viewers are going to be interested in is how, how, what's the range, you know, how fast can you charge it, how big are the batteries, all those things. Right? Absolutely, and it's exactly the same questions that our customers are asking, because right. they've got to understand that it, it, it suits their purposes. Yeah. So, so 150 kilometres on a standard range of battery, 200 kilometres on an extended range battery, uh, and the vehicle is specifically designed for inner city and last mile logistics. Right. Uh, and our customers are telling us that they don't need any more than 100 kilometres of, of range or so, right. um, because most of these vehicles spend most of their day sitting in congestion. Right. So actually range is, is important, yeah. but so long as we can deliver more than they need, it works perfectly right. for, their, for their purposes. And does that, can it use similar charges to a car? It doesn't have special charging infrastructure it, that it it'll, it, we, we use a, a back to depot charging model right. you're not going to charge something like this by the roadside no. um, but uh, we basically work with our customers we have a product called truck as a service which right. is basically working with fleet managers to help them plan all of the things that they need to do to migrate from a fleet of internal combustion engine to a fleet of electrification and, right. and a large part of that is the installation of the charging uh, infrastructure yeah, power depot. supply the truck, the truck is designed to take a standard charge, but it will also take a fast charge right. if you want to run a two-shift pattern, for right. it, for example. One of the things I've, you know, I've become very conscious of internal combustion in the last 10 years, and you see a truck parked outside a supermarket unloading, and, and right at the top, above the cab, <coughs> there's a little <laughs> petrol engine running, the flat out running a, a deep freeze unit or whatever, a refrigeration Absolutely. unit. Absolutely. Yeah, so, and we, we, we know that being in a city logistics, all of the food that you buy when you go to your shops yeah. has been put has there been by a truck. There, yeah. uh, and so refrigerated is a really important part of the market. Right. Um, but you can't have a full electric truck with zero emissions and, then, and, ha and have petrol, an internal combustion yeah. engine doing your refrigerator. Yeah. So, so we're working really hard to make sure that the high voltage battery also delivers the refrigeration so right. you have complete zero, zero emission product. This is 
very exciting. Very, very exciting. Oh my God. Oh, there we go. We're in. Oh, look at that. So I've got a seat belt. I can't oh. tell where I put that. Oh, I put that down in there. That's good. Oh, that's it. So I'm just going to explain to the viewers that Chelsea and I have both done lateral flow tests. We're negative and we've got these on because this is unusual. I haven't been in a cabin with Anybody someone for a for long, long time. time. Yeah, but that's good. So take it away. <laughs> So now, because when I first saw it, I thought, God, sitting in the middle must be so weird, but already it actually looks like that's... It's probably the most comfortable position to be in. Right. Yeah, do you know what? It took me longer to get used to going back into a right-hand drive than it did sitting in the middle. Right. Yeah, it's bizarrely comfortable in the middle. Right. But you've got more vision of everything now. Yeah. And with the longer doors as well, you can I mean, actually see the floor. Right, right. But I mean, getting in and out, I've got to say, you know, I mean, I've got in big trucks, not as much as you have, but it's yeah. quite an effort. You've got to climb right above, you know. You That's get... it, it's like four steps to get into my lorry. Right. And if you've got like a handful of stuff, yeah. and you're trying to swing yourself up and right. down, and then opening the doors and climbing down stuff, and you've got to park up against walls and stuff, is yeah. a nightmare. So that, from a point of view of doing deliveries, then if you're driving along a street like this and you've got to deliver to a shop that's there, you just get out this side. I mean, exactly, so yeah, you just is... walk, literally walk straight out rather yeah. than climbing down the stairs. Yeah, definitely. And I guess the other big difference is, you know, if we were in a diesel truck, even if the engine was somehow tucked behind us, we'd be very aware of that engine. Exactly. The they, um... I mean, this is so much smoother, isn't it? They're so smooth, yeah. so smooth, and they're a lot more reactive as well. Some of the lorries I've sat in, you can be sat there for ages trying to convince it to go into the right gear and to actually oh, move. Right. Yeah, it can be a proper nightmare. That is, that is, a, that is a production truck that's yeah, meant to be like exactly, that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's unladen weight is, is what? It's about eight tons. About eight tons yes. now as we're seeing it. Yeah, 8.6 8. 8. as a uh, 8.6 tons uh, payload capacity, right. which delivers us a 16 ton truck. A 16 ton truck, which is, I mean, it's chunky. It's certainly the biggest electric truck, or it's the, it's the first purpose built one, because I know, so, uh, you know some of the big companies are now starting to adapt the trucks they already make to electric in a similar way to the manufacturers did with the early electric cars. You know, oh, we've got the Ford Focus, let's put a battery in it and an electric motor. And, and, and that's fully understandable because yeah. the, the, the large companies that exist already have got, you know, architectures that they've invested huge amounts yeah. into, decades long of supply chain uh, arrangements, whereas we come to it with a fresh set of right. eyes unencumbered by what has gone before to say, well, if you're going to design uh, an electric vehicle and package for an electric vehicle, yeah. how would you now do it? Uh, and therefore, you can take the opportunities that the removal of the internal combustion engine gives you to place your driver yeah. in the centre <laughs> where, where, it, where, it's, where the, all of their visibility is better. You get rid of all the blind spots, um, but also the eye height is at around about 1.8 metres, so you've got direct connection to, to, to the pedestrians, to, to pedestrians outside. If, if, you, that, yeah. if you look at um, Transport for London's own statistics, 4% of the road miles in London are done by large trucks. Right. 26% of pedestrian fatalities and 78% of cyclist fatalities oh, in London trucks. are attributable to large trucks. Wow. And that's because you don't have that connection yeah. uh, and there are blind spots everywhere. And that's really one of the reasons in, in the founder's vision right. is to set out to resolve those problems yeah. and make trucks sit comfortably and work comfortably in the city centres where yeah. they need to operate. Yeah. That is, I mean, because I'm really intrigued by the central seated location. I'm just wondering about like 
you know, legislation in European countries, are they, have they all said that's OK? I mean, I would just assume some, there's some bureaucrat somewhere in an office that go, hmm, central seat, <laughs> we're not sure we like that. But, no, 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 it, it, it's right? perfectly, le perfectly legal. Right. Um, and, and it's not really done in many circumstances, but it works perfectly for a truck like yeah. this. And, and, the, and the, really, the really important reason in, in all of this is, is twofold. Firstly, because your driver is sitting low, they step out of the vehicle. They don't jump down from yeah. that great height that you would do with the engine yeah. sitting beneath you. But the really vitally important part of this is if you think about a left-hand drive or a right-hand yeah. drive vehicle, your driver swings the door open into the pathway of a cyclist yeah. yes. and always gets down into the traffic. Yeah. Whereas with a vehicle with a central seating you can get position, out either side. they always get out onto the pavement, yeah. which is much, much safer for them and much safer for, for the vulnerable road users yeah. around them. But also, from the point of view of manufacturing them, you don't have to make a left-hand drive or a right-hand drive. It's one. a it's a win-win. <laughs>see at the moment the first ones rolling off the production line and going to customers it's not that far away right so this is the first demonstrator vehicle that we launched with um, we will start building running prototype vehicles in December this year right obviously our engineers need to go through a development process but we want to co-create that development process with our customers right. because they need to understand how electric vehicles are going to fit into their fleets as well so by the middle of next year we will be working with 15, 20 prototype vehicles operating in the field with customers so that they can understand how they integrate into their operations. Right. And then in December 2020, we start building customer specification right. vehicles. So we are 18 months away. From um, a, a, and the pace that we are developing and the speed we are developing at it is really to satisfy the demand that's, that's out there in the marketplace. Yeah. Well, there we go. I think that is really exciting. That is so easy to get in and out of. I don't know if you ever tried to get up into a truck. It's really hard work. This is brilliant. I love the design of it. And it really represents an, a vitally important step. This is a really big change. We've seen electric vans. There's loads of them doing deliveries already in, in lots and lots of cities around the world. You know, smaller electric vans. I, I say transit size. That's probably a bad, uh, you know, but you know what I mean. Smaller vans. This is the next step up. This is vitally important for supplying things like a supermarket. This carries eight tons of stuff. You have eight tons of bread. That's a lot of bread. Eight tons of carrots. I don't know why I'm obsessed with bread and carrots, but you know, those are vital staples of our diet. But I think this is really exciting. Can't wait to, we're gonna have rides in the, the fully finished one next year, which is gonna be really good fun. Uh, but that's really good. That's, that's all I've got to say about the, the Volta truck. What a brilliant thing. I'm so glad that they're doing it and I really want uh, wish them the, all the success. So I'd like to thank Volta and uh, Chelsea for driving the truck today. We're trying to, going to try and find some much bigger trucks for Chelsea to drive, electric ones, in the future. It's going to take a while. Um, but that's all. So please tell your friends and families to tune in to the Fully Charged show on the YouTube. And uh, do subscribe to Fully Charged if you want to it doesn't cost you anything and there's a chance to win loads of free electric cars for a year I mean that's pretty cool and uh, also have a look at the patreon link that is beneath this video and as always if you have been thank you for watching Don't forget our great EV giveaway. Subscribe and enter for the chance to win one of several electrifying prizes, including one of four electric cars.